on, put your hand together. Come on.
Charlene D. Holmes. And I'm Bishop Randall E. Holmes. And we want to welcome you to the New Hope MBC Ministries of Miami, where we believe in building strong families for the 21st century and beyond. We welcome you to our live broadcast as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. We invite you to join us in the praise and worship experience. Please invite a friend or two to come along as well. Now, let's go right into the service. Here at New Hope NBC Ministries, where we believe in building strong families for the 21st century. Y'all come on, let's give God some praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, this is Sunday morning and I, have, I feel Sunday morning joy. I got Sunday morning joy. And this joy that I have this morning, the world couldn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Oh, I'm just so glad to be in the number one more time. How y'all feel this morning? Let's get ready to have church. Oh, God is so good. Oh, God is so good. And I just feel like praising him. Come on, y'all. Let's just praise him. Y'all can lift up your hands at home and praise the Lord. For he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, we're going to pray and we're going to just move on because it's time to have church. Amen. And we are, we're, you're not in the physical church, but right here on broadcast at your homes, y'all can praise God, you can magnify him, you can glorify him, and you can esteem him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you this day, God, and we praise you this day. For this is the day, God, that you have made, we rejoice. God, we pour our hearts to you. God, we ask God the day that you just move by your spirit, by your power, by your might. God, have your way. God, we're going to move out the way, God, so you can have your way. God, we give you glory. We give you praise this day in the name of Jesus. Put your Holy Ghost hands together and praise the Lord. Let's get ready for the best praise team on this side of heaven. New Hope NBC praise team. God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, we get it out of the way, like she say, so God can have his way. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise all around this place. Come on, we come to lift him up this morning. We come to glorify him. We come to magnify him because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, we come to give him glory.
Hallelujah. Come on, we'll worship him this morning. Come on, wide as the sky, God, we give your name praise. Come on, we all, come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, magnify him because he's worthy. Hallelujah to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, come on with the continuous of the lifting of your hands. Come on, let's worship God this morning. Let's give God praise this morning. Let him move in your homes this morning. Let him move in your cars this morning. Let him move on your job this morning. Let him move on your situations this morning. God is worthy and we will praise him. Our hearts continually praise you, God. We lift you on high. You're wide as the sky, Father. Yes. And we thank you, Father. Yes. Hey. Ooh. Yeah. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. Your name is great. You are the greatest. 
fade away. Ooh. Yes, God. Let all the other names fade away until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Yes. Jesus, take your Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, take your way. You hear? Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. Take your way. Have your way, God. It's not our way, not our will, but his will be done. Let his will be done today in your life. God, have your way. Move by your way. Move by your authority. God, just have your way. God, Lord God, we're going to move out the way so you can have your way and do what you do best. Be God. Be God, God of our life, God. Thank you. We thank him today. We praise him today. We magnify him today. Oh, God, we thank you for making a way when, when, when we couldn't see our way, when we didn't know our way. God, have your way. Lord God, we give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is great. I say he is great and greatly to be praised. He is the way. Let him have your way. Maybe you've been letting somebody else have their way first in your life. But tell them it's time for them to move out the way. So God can get in the way and he can have his perfect way. We give you glory. We give you glory and we give you praise. Right there in your living rooms or wherever you may be this morning. Lift your voice up to him because he's worthy to be praised. And let God have his way this morning. Invite him to come in and stir up the gifts that's within you. Have your way. And I'm going to move out the way because I'm going to introduce our bishop this morning, which he don't need no introduction. He is the set man of this house, New Hope NBC Ministry. And I've been knowing this man for a very, very long time. I mean a long time. Look like I'm telling you. Over 45 years, we just had an anniversary. He was my high school sweetheart. I still get chill bumps. Yes, chill bumps. Yes, we are older, but I still, he, when he comes in the room, mm, my eyes just asphyxiated on him. I'm telling you, I love this man. He is a man of God. He preached the word. He lived by what he's preached. He is a great father and the father of all our children. He is a grandfather. I'm talking about of our, all our grandchildren. Thank you, Jesus. And he is the bishop of this house, New Hope. And I'm telling you to know him, you have to love him. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to get out the way because we're going to move out the way. So this great praise team going to come and bring us a preparation of praise this morning. And the next voice you're going to hear, none other than Bishop Randall Eugene Holtz. And I just want you all to let go and let God have his way. And hear ye what the man of God has to say to us this morning. Come on, praise him. Y'all give God some praise. 
give God some praise and give God some glory. For this is the day the Lord has made in Jesus' name. rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This is a great day in the Lord and we praise him and we give him glory and we give him honor. 
What a wonderful opportunity we now have to worship and to praise God and to give his name all the glory. He is worthy this morning of all the praise and he is worthy this morning of all the honor. There is none like our God in all of the universe. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. There's nobody that can love us like Jesus. No one can care for us and do for us and make a way for us like Jesus. That's why this morning I love the Lord. The reason I love him because he heard my cry and he came to my rescue and he came to your rescue as well. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you this morning once again for this awesome opportunity, this wonderful privilege to be in your presence one more time. We know that in your presence there is fullness of joy. Thank you this morning for anointing us afresh. Thank you for the fresh new mercies that you have released this day. We know, God, that even in the midst of what we are going through, you are still able to do anything but fail. You are still God all by yourself. And you got all power in your hand. So God, we just want to say thank you this morning. We love you. Thank you this morning for waking us up again, starting us on our way to see a brand new day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for keeping a hedge of protection around us and leading us by day and by night. Thank you for the angels of protection, the angels that defend, the angels that guard us in all of our ways of obedience and service. Now, God, bless the word today. Bless the people today. Give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what your word will instruct. This we ask in Jesus' name. We pray. One more time, praise team. Come on. One more time. Open your voice. Open your mouth. Lift up your voice. Come on. God, you are source. You are the strength of my life. That's why we lift our hands. That's why we lift our hands. Come on, say it again. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. special thank you to Prophetess for moderating for us today, for leading us in worship. I want to thank our awesome praise team. You have been tremendous during this season that we're in to allow God to use your gift and your giftings. Thank you, Alonzo, Tina, and Marianne. Thank you so very much. Thank you to our awesome minister of music, Mr. Sigmund McGee, Mr. Jamal Bell, our percussionist. Thank you to our a fantastic video ministry, Karen, and to Sarah Lynn, and to Corlez, and to Andre. Thank you so very much for all you do every week to make sure that New Hope uh, message and brand is delivered with excellence. 
This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We are praying much for you and your families. We are praying much for our community, our state, our nation. We are going through some turbulent times, as we all know, and we're in a peculiar season. But in the midst of it all, my sister from California, Tony Beckwit, said, we're going to give God praise in the midst of it all. And we thank God for his power, his grace, and his mercy that covers us, that follows us, that keeps us in the midst of this storm. All right, now listen, we are still dealing with this pandemic. And uh, in spite of what others may say, we have not yet turned the corner. Uh, we got to listen to the credible voices, the scientists, and those who know. We are in what I call now the eye of the storm. The first wave has hit. There's a little calm now. But listen, we're in a season where the backside of the storm, those who live in South Florida, you understand what I'm saying, those who experience hurricanes, you know, that first one that comes in, but then there's the backside that's uh, sometimes rough, rougher than the front side. So don't become complacent and don't get too comfortable. Start letting down your guard. You know, we got to make sure we stay vigilant and prayerful uh, because this pandemic is not over yet. Now, we're not going to panic. As I always say, we're not going to panic. We're going to give God praise in the midst of it all because we know that our God is able to keep us even in this. And while others may be walking in fear, we're going to walk by faith, but we're not going to become complacent. We're going to do as the Bible says. We're going to watch as well as pray. Amen. So keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Make sure you're doing all you can to keep you and your family and your loved ones safe from this pandemic season that we are now in. Not only are we dealing with the pandemic, but we're dealing also with a whole lot of social ills that are coming to the forefront as well. And we are praying for righteousness and justice will fall down, roll down like a mighty stream. We are praying that the conscience of America and the world will come to know uh, who God is. I believe in my heart that in this season, God is drawing us closer to him. He is bringing the house of faith back where it needs to be. We are not competing with anyone we're not competing with nobody else. We just want to love God. We just want to love on God. And God wants to reach out and bring us back where we need to be. You know, the Bible says it this way, you know, in the book of 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God said, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. And our land today needs to be healed. I believe the land is, is, is crying out for the people of God to come back to God, to stop hurting the land that we live in and live on, and come back and serve a God who is righteous and ready to forgive us of all of our sins. So when the righteous pray, that's right, when the righteous pray, God answers. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So we can't stop praying in this season and don't stop playing don't stop praying and don't stop playing don't act like this stuff is over it's not over yet and therefore we got to remain vigilant and prayerful and watchful watch as well as pray so that we remain safe and your family remains safe and well during this season there's much more to say uh, but we're going to leave that right there and we're going to act that you continue to uh, embrace one another and pray for your family, your friends, your block, your community, you know, one person at a time, that we may do the right things. Amen. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Amen. Don't congregate in large numbers. Amen. Do what uh, needs to be done in order for us to get through this season. All right. This morning, I want to go to Songs number 24. Songs 24. The 24 number of song. It's a powerful song by King David. Uh, he acknowledges the mighty and the power of God, the power and the mightiness of God. 
and he talks about it in a in a way that is um, that is that is unashamable and one that he knows the God of the universe. He says in the King, New King James Version, it says it this way, uh, Psalms 24, he says, The earth is the Lord's, mm -hmm. and all its fullness, the world, and those who dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's. It belongs to God. It belongs to God. It all belongs to God. And all its fullness, not only what's on the earth, but what's ever in the earth. The earth belongs to God. And all its fullness, the world, the stars, the moons, the planets, everything God made. And those who dwell therein, it all belongs to God. It all belongs to God. I want you to just... Think about that for a little while this morning as, uh, as we look around, as we stand around, as we survey, you know, what's going on and where we are. I want you to know that the earth is the Lord's. It all belongs to God. Not only is the earth his, but those who dwell therein. That means you and me, every person, every thing that dwells in the earth belongs to God. Now it it makes sure it tells us even in that listen, it makes sure it tells even in that that the true ownership of all that we know and see and be a part of it belongs to God. So it's all in God's hand. All of this is in God's hand. And if anyone is able to fix it or to correct it or to mend it or to make it what it ought to be, it's him who made it. And that's God. So we need to go to him. We need to pray to him. We need to ask him who owns everything, God, we need you to repair everything that's broken in this universe, including me and including you and including this earth. Why? Because it all belongs to God. In the New Living Translation, this is how it reads. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The earth is the Lord's and everything. Underline that. Make a note that. Write that down. Everything. Everything in it belongs to God. The world and all its people belong to him. Whether you're white, you're black, you're, you're, you're yellow, you're brown, doesn't matter. Whether you're from uh, the north, the south, the east, the west, whatever continent you're from, we all belong to God. We are one people that belongs to God. There are no big eyes and no little U's. Amen. The rich and the poor belongs to God. The have and the have nots belong to God. The well and the sick belongs to God. Those who have knowledge and those who have little knowledge belongs to God. Everybody and everything in this earth belongs to God. So that means that we ought to treat one another right. We ought to love one another. Amen? We ought to do right by one another. And that's because we all belong to God. Amen? God have no picks. God have no chooses. God have no favorites. He doesn't use favoritism. He just looks at us all as one. And therefore, when we look at our God, we got to recognize who God is. God is Jehovah. God is Elohim. He's the God of the universe. And therefore, he and he alone has the answer that we, so, that we are so desperately in need of. God has the answer to every one of our problems, every one of our situations, every one of our circumstances, and every one of our conditions. The answer lies in God, who is the owner, the architect, and the owner, and the ultimate fixer of everything that's going wrong in this earth. In the New English translation, the NET, 
This is how it reads. The Lord owns the earth and all it contains. The Lord owns the earth and all it contains. Everything. The world and all who live in it. All who live in it. We don't live in the earth exclusive from God. Mm -mm. Without God, we have no life. Amen? We breathe his air. We walk on his earth. We eat his food. We digest his blessings. It all belongs to God, every one of us. So listen, we got to learn how to return the favor. <laughs> We got to learn how to return the favor. We got to learn how to say thank you to a God who has been so good to us, even in the midst of this storm. Listen, even in the midst of this storm, even in the midst of this calamity, we still got to give God praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's what David said. Remember this one? David said, I will bless God every chance I get. Because one time you're not going to have a chance. You see? You got to praise him while you got a chance. Give him glory while you got a chance. You got to work while it is day. For when night come, can't nobody do a thing. All right? So it all belongs to God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The Lord owns the earth and all it contains. It all belongs to God. All right, God, so this belongs to you. Everything that we are part of belongs to you. Everything that we see belongs to you. And everything that we're going through belongs to you. So therefore, what he is saying to us, even in the midst of this storm, this pandemic, what God is really saying to us, while he is not delaying, he is not denying us, he's not delaying, but he's just waiting on us. God is waiting on us to line up with him. He's waiting on us to come back home to him. That's why, that's why he says, if my people who are called by my name, if you recognize who God is, you ought to come home. If you know who God is, you ought to get back in right alignment. If you know what God can do for you, you ought to let him have his way. And like prophet has said, get out the way so God can have his way. Get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way uh, and, and stop trying to Block what God is trying to do. God is trying to bring you back and you're pulling away. God is trying to bring you in and you're running away. So what we have to do, we got to come back in right alignment with God and say, God, since it belongs to you, that means me too. God, have your way in my life. Do what you need to do, God, to make me what I ought to be. I can't do anything without you. Matter of fact, if it had not been for the Lord who were on our side, none of us would be here today. So by virtue of the fact, and I'm moving quickly, by virtue of the fact that we are still here, tells us that God is still calling us to get closer. God is still calling us to come and look closer. Listen, the Bible says, watch this in verse number two, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the holy hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. For God hath laid the earth's foundation on the seas, NLT, and built it upon ocean depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. 
Wow. Only those who do not worship idols and never tell lies. Uh oh. And never tell lies. Doesn't matter what title you hold. Doesn't matter, you know, how much money you got or how much influence you may have. Amen. The Bible says it this way. A liar shall not tarry in his sight. So it doesn't matter who you are, what side of the track you were raised on. Amen. What office you hold. You got to tell the truth. Because God hates a liar. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> it's going to get better. The Bible says in the NET, for he set its foundations upon the seas. Now, can you imagine that? God set a foundation upon water? Normally, you set a foundation on something that is sturdy, stable. But God, because he is God, he can establish foundations on that which is not stable, on the sea. He says, and establish it upon the ocean currents. All right? Who is allowed to ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may go up to his holy dwelling place? And he says, the one whose deeds are blameless, whose motives are pure, who does not lie or make promises with no intention of keeping them. Lord, have mercy. The earth is the Lord's. I'm glad it's not yours. Uh, and you're glad it's not mine. Because, you know, we will always do what's right for us, better for us, best for us, in spite of what's not better or best for somebody else. But God does not operate like that. He's the same God yesterday, today, and will be forevermore. So if he was just yesterday, he's going to be just today. And if he's just today, he's going to be just tomorrow. If he was fair yesterday, he's going to be fair today, and he's going to be fair tomorrow. Because the Lord changes not. He don't shift. He don't, he don't, he don't sidetrack. He don't walk, you know, you know, one way today and another way tomorrow. He don't say one thing this morning and change it this afternoon. Because everything God says is so uh, precise. Because once it leaves his mouth, it's so powerful. Once it leaves his mouth, once he decrees it and declares it, whatever he says is going to become. Whatever he says shall not return void. So every time God speaks, he measures what he says. Because words have power. Words have power. And the word of God is powerful. It's pure. It's potent. Amen. It's precious. So whenever he start opening his mouth and decreeing, let there be, baby, it's going to become. Whenever he starts saying this or that, that or this is going to show up. So the word of God is powerful. So when he spoke and said, let there be, everything he said became. Why? Because it belongs to him. The earth, everything that's contained in it, he set it where it needs to be. So if anybody can fix it, only thing God got to do is speak it. Only thing God got to do is say it. Only thing God got to do is decree it and declare it. And that which was not shall become. Because God is able to do anything but fail. All right, now here we go. Who's going to stand before God? Yeah. Who's going to stand before God? What type of people are going to stand before God? And the Bible says it this way. We're going to just deal here for one for a minute or two. He says, who shall ascend into the hill of God? And who shall stand in this hole? Who's going to stand before God? And God says it right here. Watch this. David says it right here in verse number four. He who has clean hands, number one. And he who has a pure heart, number two, clean hands and a pure heart. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, my God. Only those whose hands and hearts are pure 
Only those whose hands and hearts are pure can stand before God in the holy place. Only those whose deeds are blameless and whose motives are pure uh -oh, and does not lie or make promises with no intention of keeping them. You see, those who are going to stand before God, watch this, your heart got to be right. It's all about the heart. It's all about your heart. So your mouth can say one thing, but what's in your heart? You can say one thing, but what are your actions? You see, actions speak louder than words. It's got to be in your heart. And what's, once it's right in your heart, the right spirit would get in your head. What's in your heart creates that want-to attitude, that right mindset in your head. And when your heart and your head get on one accord, your hand got to catch up. Your heart and your hands. Pure heart and clean hands. Pure heart and clean hands. Now, to understand this pure heart and clean hands concept, we really have to go back to David's Songs 51. Songs 51, because David says some uh, uh, alert, alerting things here, he says to us in Songs 51. Remember this? He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And then David says this from Bible study. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. He says, I was brought up in iniquity. My mother conceived me in sin. But God, here we go, in verse number six, he said, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hits up, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. Now, here we go. Talking about heart and hands now. Verse 10, David says, create in me a what? A clean heart. Who shall stand? Those who have a clean heart, a pure heart. It's got to be in your heart to want to do right. It's got to be in your heart to want to love right. It's got to be in your heart to want to worship and serve right. You got to have a heart for God. You got to have a heart for God. We, we got to have a heart for God because God has a heart for us. And even though we're flesh, even though we're feeble, even though we're frail, you know, even though we mess up sometime every now and then, all of us do. But that doesn't change the condition of our heart. Our heart must be in a place where when we go astray, we have enough heart to say, God, bring me back home. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. He looked at David one day, that same David who wrote these songs. He said, David was the man after my own heart. You want God to do you right? Have a heart for God. Have a heart for God. Verse number 10, watch this. I'm moving real quickly. 51 and 10, and we're going to get back to the other one. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. God, I need a clean heart. My hands cannot be clean or pure or do rightly or justly until my heart get right with you. And I'm praying right now. I'm pleading right now 
that God will temper your hearts to the point where we come back to him. If my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then when I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. In order for our land to be healed, we've got to have a heart for God because he's the owner. He, he owns everything. Everything that's here, he, he owns it. He made it, and he alone knows how to fix it. God alone. God alone. No man. God alone. Nobody. God alone is the only one that can fix this situation today. And who will stand in his place, in the holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. It's a matter of the heart and your hands stand clean. Only those whose hands and hearts, according to the NLT, the New Life Translation, only those, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. Little white lies. <laughs> Little black lies, little yellow lies. I don't care what kind of color you want to put on there. A liar is just a liar. And therefore, God says, a liar shall not tarry in his sight. So we got to make sure our hearts are right and our hands are pure. Our hearts are right and our hands are pure. You may, we, may be hiding, we may be hiding from people. And maybe, you know, pulling a wool over people, you know, saying one things to people, you know, trying to impress people that we don't even know, you know. But that doesn't mean anything. Because God looked through all of that. When God looks at us, he looks straight at our heart. Laser focus. At our hearts, he determined our motives. He determined our intent. He determined our love for him. And if we love God, we got to love God with our whole heart. Only those whose hearts and hands are pure, only those whose deeds are blameless and whose motives are pure and do not lie. When you love God, you'll tell the truth. He says, such people may seek you and worship you in your presence Oh, God, we can't even worship God right until our heart get right. My God, got to get through this. We can't even worship right if our heart is not right. We can't even praise God right if our heart is not right. If your heart is not in it, the right stuff will never come out. You can sing the songs, you can pray the prayer, you can preach the word, but if your heart is not in it, it doesn't mean anything. Folk will see right through that facade. If you're always talking about you love me, you love them, you love this, you love that, but your actions and your ways are saying something different, folk will see right through that facade and they will see the real intent of your heart. And if we can see it, what do you think about God? If we can see it, what do you think about God? who examines our hearts to determine our motives and our intent. So when God sees that you have a heart for him, look what God will do. He will move heaven and earth in order to be a blessing in your life. My God, my God. He says such godly people are rewarded by the Lord. According to the NET, those who have right, in, right motives and clean heart and a few hands, he, say, he says, such godly people <laughs> are rewarded by the Lord and vindicated by the God who delivers them. Such purity characterizes the people who seek his favor. Yeah, that's what we need. We need the favor of God on our life. And when God sees our heart, 
favor shows up in our life. When God sees the, your heart and your love for him, he will move heaven and earth in order for favor to show up in your life. That's who keeps me. That's who makes a way for me. That's who keeps me healthy. That's who keeps me uplifted. That's who keeps me blessed. It's because it's not me, it's God. It's not you, it's God. It's the God who can open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that no man can curse. When your heart is right toward God, God is obligated to bless you. When your heart is right, that's when favor shows up. I'm going to read it one more time out of the NET. You, you do it also. He says, such godly people are rewarded by the Lord. Hallelujah. Such godly people are rewarded. My God. God rewards us. I wish, you catch, I, wish, I wish you catch this this morning. I hope you're catching this this morning. You know, I want you to know where your blessings are coming from. Your blessings are not coming from around. Your blessings are coming from God. God is moving on your behalf. Hallelujah. You got to make it personal. God is moving on my behalf. God is making a way on my behalf. God is opening doors for me on my behalf. God is keeping me and blessing me. Why? Because my heart is right toward God. I love him. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied my every groan. Such godly people. Not just me. I like this. You see? It's not just one person being, God's people, God's people are being blessed. <laughs> not just by title, but those who are connected to God by their heart. Those who are connected to God by their heart. Such godly people are rewarded by the Lord. Not gossip, gossipers, you know. Don't be, don't be playing that, that, that game. You know, if, if you love God, you, you hate gossip. You, you ain't talking about nobody. You ain't trying to tear down nobody. You ain't, you, you ain't trying to, you know, uh, 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 remove anybody. You're trying to help somebody. Godly people are rewarded. Godly people are rewarded. Godly people are rewarded. Godly people, I'm going to keep saying it. Godly people are rewarded by the Lord. And godly people are vindicated by the God who delivers them. So now, not only does God reward me and bless me, watch this, not only does God reward me and bless me, but God vindicates me. That means God fights my battles. So we don't have to lose any sleep, try to come up with any schemes, or try to dig another ditch. You know, for those who don't like us. Because God will turn your haters into your motivators. God will turn your haters to make them become your elevators. To lift you to the place where you need to be. So don't lose sleep. And don't lose weight. And don't lose time trying to fight those who are fighting against you. Just stand still, the Bible says, and see. The salvation of the Lord. It is God who delivers me. God who vindicates me. That's what the Bible says. Because my motives are right. My heart is right and my hands are right. I got a pure heart and clean hands. Hallelujah. Such purity, he says, in the NET, characterizes the people who seek his favor. Seek his favor. You want favor in your life? You want to go to God right. You want favor in your life? You got to turn from your wicked ways. You got to start seeking the Lord early while he might be found. Stop making excuses as to why you can't get to the place you need to be. Stop making excuses as to why you can't show up where you need to show up. Stop making excuses 
of not being where you need to be. Sometimes you got to force place yourself in a place where you need to be so you can get what God wants to give. You got to be in the right place at the right time. You got to show up where God is showing up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got to show up where God is showing up. Hope y'all caught that one. Hallelujah. You got to show up where God is showing up. And if you get where God is, favor going to follow. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. His anointing. Where his anointing is, every yoke is destroyed. Where his presence is, there is fullness of joy. You got to show up where God is showing up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who seek his favor. Seek me early while I might be found. No, listen. Let me say this real quickly. Stop trying to seek God on your time. Oh, God, I'm tired. I'll catch you later. God say, I'm gone. You got to get up early. 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 You got to seek the Lord early. Seek me early, the Bible says, while I might be found. And if you find him, if you show up where God is showing up, favor is going to hit your house. Look up. He says, ye gates, rise up, ye eternal doors. Then the majestic king will enter. Who is this majestic king? The Lord who is strong and mighty. The Lord who is mighty in battle. Look up, you gates. Rise up. You eternal doors. Then the majestic king. The majestic king will enter. The Bible says, who is this majestic king? The Lord who is commands his army. He is the majestic king. Can I get a witness? Open ancient gates open ancient doors and let the king of glory enter who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord invincible in battle open up ancient gates and let the king of glory enter who is the king of glory the lord of heaven's army he is the king of glory can i get a witness who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the Lord of hosts. The Lord, strong in battle. The Lord, who is able to make a way out of no way. The Lord who put food on my table. The Lord who heals my body. The Lord strong and mighty. He is able to do anything but fail. Oh, do you know him? I said, do you know him? Oh, do you know him? Ain't he all right? He walks with me. He talks with me. He holds my hand and he guides my feet. Oh, do you know him? Who is the King of glory? Who is the Lord Almighty? Jesus, do 
you know him? Jesus, Mary's baby, God's son, Lily of the Valley, bright morning star. Jesus, my hope for tomorrow, my joy and sorrow. Jesus, my hiding place. Jesus, my lead, my guide, my water, my bread. Oh, do you know him? I said, do you know him? He died. I said he died for my sin and for your sin. They buried him in a barry tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. I said all power in his hand give me clean hands and give me a pure heart wash me till I become white as snow fix me until everything that's broken is repaired restore the joy of my salvation renew a right spirit on the inside so I can praise you so I can worship you so I can serve you say yes say yes ah, yes it all belongs to him it all belongs to him everything that's in it the world and all its people you and me belongs to him and since we belong to him I'm going to lean on him I'm going to depend on him I'm going to wait on him I'm going to show up where God is showing up so he can bless me like I need to be blessed. Right there in your living room, right here and right now, he is showing up so he can show up in your life. If you don't know him, right now is a mighty good time to know him. And if you know him, you can help me praise his name. Put your hands together. Throw back your head. Lift up your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm one of yours. Thank you, Lord. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. Oh, my sister. The Lord wants to do something significant in your life. Come on, praise team. We offer Christ to you, my brother, my sister. Just to come on in, just to show up where he is showing up. 
So favor can hit your life, can hit your house. One more time, one more time. have done as the Lord required yet there is room if Israel be lost Jacob will not lose his reward prophetess the earth is the Lord the fullness thereof everything that's contained here belongs to God and if God can see the condition of your heart and the intent of your hand he will make sure favor show up at your house oh god i thank you that's why your heart got to be right of nothing but the pure in heart shall see god you got to search your heart amen and if, if anything that 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 is not like him uh, anything of forgiveness bitterness jealousy um anything on uh, um, the things you're holding on in the past things that somebody may may have done to you let it go because nothing, nothing, nothing but the pure in heart shall see God. Check your heart out. God, God, God look at the heart, in the heart. So our hearts got to be clean. Some of us, we're holding on to past, past. It's, how long ago that it happened? It's the past. It's behind you. You ain't never seen nobody walking forward and looking, behind, looking in the back. We can't see behind us, but just press towards the mark. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand. Honey, your heart. Bishop, I thank you, thank you. for that rich word, that right now uh, word. I was ready to uh, um, um, just shout. Run, I'm running all over in the church. Ain't nothing but a few of us here. You see the, the, the musicians over there and the praise team and they, those in the sound bo um, booth. And just Bishop, uh, our children and I, my armor bearer Diane, we are here. But still praising God as though the church is full. You got to, that's, that's, that's the condition of my heart right now. I don't care in the midst of the pandemic. I can still praise God. I can still magnify him. I can still glorify him. I can still exhort him. I can still reverence him. Hallelujah. You know why? Because I got the heart of God. I can still read my word. Glory to God. I didn't just, some of y'all, that when the pandemic wasn't here, you wouldn't come in the church. You ain't put your foot in the church. I don't know the last time you've been in the church. But right now, honey, I, when, when, the, when the pandemic came, I, I, I went to church when the pandemic is still in the church now. And when the pandemic wasn't, I was coming to church. Because the Bible said I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because my heart is right. The condition of my heart. Amen. I don't have nothing against no one. Honey, nothing but the pure. Oh, Bishop, thank you for that word. Thank you for that rich word, that right now word. I feel like praising him, magnify him, glorify him. I just feel God in this house. I thank God for that word, the condition of your heart. Is your heart right? Check your heart out. Check what's in there. You know what's in there. You know what you're holding on. Let it go. Let go and let God. Bishop, I love you, man. Thank you so much. I love you. You said something, prophetess. I want to echo this. She said, our past, we've been hurt. And we're holding on to those hurts. Your past contains your hurts. Your past, it harbors your hurts. But your future contains your healing. So we got to move past our hurts in order to get to our healings. Let go. Let go. And let's go. Let go. And let's go toward our tomorrow because that's where our healings are. God bless you and God keep you is our prayers. We thank God for you and we praise God for all that you're doing. Now listen, even in this pandemic, we got to continue to praise God. And praising God not only with our lips, amen, but we also got to give from our hearts and our and our hands. So this is our time to sow our seed. We got to continue to sow 
in every season, every season we got to sow. Amen. We can't harbor because the moment we stop sowing, the moment, that's the moment we stop growing. The moment we stop sowing is the moment that the heavens shut up against us. But as long as we sow, the heavens will open. The long as we sow, God will continue to send a harvest so we can grow. So right now on the screen, you see our various means how you can plant your seed today. You can give by Cash App, NHMBC1881. That's our Cash App for you to give. If you want to give by Cash App, you can go to our website, newhopembc.com, and press the Donate or Give button to sow your seed. You can go online to Tifly to sow your seed. You can give by text giving to sow your seed. All the various ways made it very easy for you to continue to plant so that you can continue to be blessed. You can write the check. You can mail it in or bring it in. We're here every day, Monday through Friday from 9 to 1, to service you, to pray for you, and to meet you here at the door. Continue to sow. Continue to plant. Because as long as you plant, as long as you sow, God is going to grow a mighty harvest back unto you. Thank you so very much for doing what God has allowed you to do. All right, next weekend, next Saturday on the 19th, our Senior Saints Activity Committee and our Hospitality Ministry are joining forces to help the community during this global pandemic. They're going to have a COVID-19 community assistance program. They're going to be giving out hot lunches and COVID-19 supplies to everyone who comes by the parking lot from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Masks are required. Please wear your mask. It's not a time to come out and fellowship and have party, but we do want to meet your needs and help relieve some of the things you need today. So we're going to have a drive through giveaway in the parking lot of the church on next Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. here at the church. Hot lunches, amen, and supplies to be given away. Thank you to the Senior Saints Committee and the Hospitality Ministry for doing what you do to make life easy. And then we have our breakthrough prayer every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 6 a.m. to 7 is the official prayer line for the New Hope Church. Please encourage all the members, those who have a prayer request, those who have a prayer need. Listen, this is the official prayer line for the New Hope Church. We have people joining us from California, Chicago, New Jersey, Georgia, all through the state of Florida, Texas, you know, and it would just be um, a shame if everyone outside is getting blessed and those of the house are not coming to eat. So let's, let's come and, and, and be a part. Yes, that's the way I uh, to stay connected. Even though you can't come to the, the, the physical church, that's the way um, of connection with us. Um, Bishop and I are on there Monday, um, Wednesday, and Friday. It is from 6 to 7, uh, one hour. Jesus said, could you pray for me one hour? And um, we've been doing this since the pandemic. And this is the way all of our membership, if you're a member, de definitely if you're a member of this church, at one given time. We've been on there for how long now, Bishop? Six months. On six months. And some of you all have not. Um, we're getting outside people coming, and our members have not been. That, and I'm talking to everybody, every auxiliary, every member. If you haven't been on that prayer line one time, you, you need to get on there. So just get on there and join us, and God will do, he'll do amazing things in your life during this time. Um, um, when we're unified as one body, together we stand, divided we fall. So let's, I want to see you all there in the morning or hear you all there in the morning. Amen. And be on the prayer line. We know because we got the line, what you call in, you call in and we got the names. We know your number. It's toll free. And it's toll free. So get on the prayer line and get off the gossip line. Amen. It don't cost you a dime, just a little time. Amen. God has spoken. Let the church say Amen. Thank you, Lonzo, Mary Ann, Tina B. Thank you. Thank you, Sigmund, Jamal, Karen, Sarah, Colez, DeAndre. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God
God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church. Let the church. Let the whole church. Word say to what his will is. God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church get the whole church. Make this your response. Whatever he says. From the healing of your body Amen. to the raising of the dead. Amen. No matter how you feel, Amen. how your world may be real, battle on through the night. Amen. Cause we go win this fight. Amen. Your help is on the way. Why? Well, well, well. Let the whole church. Until next time. Father, we thank you for what our ears have heard, our eyes have seen, our hearts have felt. Thank you most of all for your power and your presence in this place. God, we know you own everything. It all belongs to you. So God, we're relying on you to do what only you can do in this season. Send healing and send restoration to this world and to our land. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Come on, y'all. Oh! church. All the deacons, all the members, all the seniors. God has spoken. Well, well, well. Let the church, Let the church sing. Heaven smile on you. See you next time.